Central Australia are famous for coral reefs. They are the biggest reefs in the world, some of them over a thousand miles long. At high tide, the reefs are completely submerged, but as the tides fall, the waters rush down and leave the reef high and dry. Just imagine walking around this beautiful coral reef with all the colors of the rainbow seen in fantastic forms like grass and trees and shrubs. Water is clear as crystal, marvelous tropical fish darting about in amongst the coral forest. See that water rushing off the reef? In a few hours, the tide will be up again and everything will be submerged. Oh, here come some Montgomery Islanders. Watch their faces. Extraordinary people. Riding in an old, primitive boat that they have made with a stone axe and fire. Playful, you see. Yet they have a bad reputation, but not justly. They have interfered with a few pearl divers, it's true, but in all probability, the pearl diver interfered with them first. These are the people that the Australians call abo. Notice how they decorate their bodies by these dreadful scars. The scars are made by cutting the skin with a sharp shell and rubbing in mud impregnated with salt water. The mud is usually taken from around the roots of the mangrove trees which, by the way, flourish in salt water. In this part of Australia, the sea is full of huge fish. Look at this gigantic stingray with a dangerous and poisonous uh, sting in his tail. Notice it, as sharp as a needle and fearfully poisonous. And yet these people love that fish. And there's a shovel-nosed shark. Very good eating, shark steak. The dugong has breasts, very much like a woman, and suckles its young in the same position. This has given rise to the legend that the sea contains mermaids. There is a similar animal, but not the same animal, in America, known as the manatee. The popular name for the dugong is the sea cow. That specimen probably weighs about 600 pounds. The meat is good to eat, and of course the sea cow provides oil, as well as a good thick hide. I wonder whether you ever read the adventures of Louis de Rougemont, the man who said that he once rode on a turtle. He might have, because you see for yourselves that the Australian Aboriginals ride on turtles. Tremendous strength the animal has. We have to take care of those flippers because the turtle can inflict a very nasty wound on the legs. And he can bite. Just look at the way he hangs onto that stick. At night, hundreds of these turtles were found on the beach. And then when the morning came, they rushed madly back to the water again. Look at the way they're going. Tremendous speed. A regular turtle derby. And what are they doing? Sounding for turtle's eggs. If the stick comes up colored, there are eggs in the sand. As many as 200 might be found in one nest. The female turtle comes ashore at night, lays her eggs and returns to the sea. The eggs are left to hatch in the warm, dry sand. The little turtles, when hatched out, fight their way through the sand straight to the sea. But they're lucky if they go up because the young turtles fall prey to the great fish and sea eagles, so that very rarely more than four or five ever grow to be real giant turtles. Look at the size that people grow when they live on turtle's eggs. Those men are nearly seven feet high. On the shore are thousands and thousands of soldier crabs, little fellows about the size of a 50 cent piece. They swarm over the sand in millions. 
day. It looks a bit wild here. These people are coming out on rafts from shore just to take a look at it. But we are very interested in them because they look nothing like the ordinary Negro. They are not Negroes. And what's this? Way up on the top of the cliff, an eagle's nest. And look at the splendid physique of this Australian Aboriginal. Aha, babies. He's robbed the nest, but there are plenty more. Say, what a mouth. Watch his mouth. Another. And look at the way he decorates his body. Some of the wildest blacks in Australia. Quite different to the ones you saw earlier in the picture. Notice that these men do not throw the spears with their hands, but they use a special kind of a throwing stick called a woomera. It's a flat lever of wood and enables the spear to be hurled to tremendous distances. The range here is only 60 yards, but these men can throw 200 yards and hit a can of beans at 40 yards. See the target over on the right there? That was pretty close. Right in the bullseye. Somehow or other, the word corroboree is always associated with Australia. And here is a real corroboree in the very wildest parts of tropical Australia. The women are sitting over on the side there. These people give a representation of birds and animals in action. Here, for instance, a man is supposed to be dead and birds are pecking at his body. I think that the alligator dance was the most amusing. And so, my friends, I've taken you to far off Australia, and I hope you have found your visit entertaining. Cheerio!